Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include EU link to Britain rules sparks record £21 million in winter fuel payments abroad. Canada launches new attack against EU's proposed dirty oil rules. And dozens of EU human rights are smuggled into the UK. New European Union asylum ruling plus same old same old. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit nightly news. First from our homepage. Ministers blamed ridiculous European Court of Justice rules today as official figures revealed a near 70% jump in government winter fuel payments to expats and pensioners living across Europe. The Department of Work and Pensions paid a record £21.4 million to nearly 120,000 old age pensioners across the European economic area in 2012-2013. Pensioners in Spain, Greece and Cyprus all pocketed the cheques, which are designed to help elderly pay for their gas and electricity bills. Look at this. More ill-thought-out rhetoric. The pensioners that we speak of are those that rebuilt Britain post-war. UK government at the time promised them that if they worked hard, paid their taxes and national insurance, the state would provide them with a pension and welfare support. And the pensioners upheld their end of the bargain. British government must uphold its end of the bargain. But here's a thought. What if Chairman Cameron decided to grow a set and said to the EU, Look, chaps, we're a bit short. We need £21 million for our pensioners and £30 million to sort out the school placement problem for our children, as we ran out of places since you old boys in the Commission have imported all and sundry to UK under your Shenzhen agreement. How about we don't pay you £50 million? Pounds? Now, come on, fellas, we're not asking much. Just to skip one day of British taxpayers' contribution to your crazy crackpot club. Canada, on Wednesday, renewed its attack on the European Union's plan to classify Canadian tar sands as particularly dirty and released a study questioning the data behind the controversial measure. Canada has the world's third largest proven reserves of crude, much of which is locked in the tar sands of Alberta. Extracting the oil requires more energy than conventional production, a fact regularly highlighted by environmental campaigners. Now... If you folks haven't seen H2 oil, then it is worth searching this film out. Tar Sands demonstrates the issue we face with oil supply and demand. Here's the brief on Tar Sands. The oil is distributed throughout billions of tonnes of sand. It's just a syrupy, sticky residue. Now, to access this oil, sand is dug out en masse and boiled in millions of gallons of water. The oil floats to the top and is scraped off, and the sand sinks and is discarded. Now the wastewater is contaminated with hydrocarbons and heavy elements and so it's poured into settling pools to sediment out before eventually being returned to the rivers. Now, there are big complaints from the folks living in the Alberta area along with massive increases in unusual cancers which are often occurring in the young people. Justice Secretary Chris Grayling has fired a broadside at Brussels after a top judge warned that dozens of new human rights had been smuggled into Britain by the back door. High Court Judge Mr Justice Mostyn said the European Union's Charter of Fundamental Rights appeared to apply in the UK, despite the last Labour government supposedly negotiating a watertight opt-out. The judge said a ruling by the European Court of Justice meant that the charter, which contains a host of new rights, was valid in British courts. He said the constitutional significance of this can hardly be overstated. Now there's an interesting statement. Should the British constitution have been breached by the actions of government ministers, especially when relating to foreign laws or rule, well that would constitute treason. An interesting development when a High Court judge begins speaking of such things.
where a member state may not transfer an asylum seeker to the state competent to examine his application because of a risk of infringement of his fundamental rights in the latter, the member state is required to identify another member state as responsible for the examination. Now, the Dublin II regulation sets out the criteria for determining the member state competent to examine an application for asylum lodged in the EU. Now, this is an interesting article, and when you combine it with our report from last month about African immigrants arriving in Italy and being handed EU visas, 500 euros, and shipped off elsewhere into Northern Europe, well, it surely can only be a matter of time before the Italians get a jolly good telling off by the EU kleptocrats. In our Tuesday column, Trevor Coleman, MEP, writes, In politics there is nothing original under the sun, especially nowadays. Back in June of this year I wrote about FUD, fear, uncertainty and doubt and how these three elements would be used by our politicians and others to coerce us into agreeing to remain in the European Union. As predicted, FUD is well and truly underway, with the publication recently of a landmark report by the Confederation of British Industry, or CBI, stressing the economic importance of the UK remaining within the EU. Staying in the EU is overwhelmingly best for business, it declares. The CBI Director General, John Cridland, went on to state that EU membership is worth £3,000 a year to every household. Without being frivolous, Mr Cridland, I hadn't noticed that we were three grand a year better off in my home. But for the moment, I'll let that pass. Now, Sir Mike Rake, the CBI president, reckoned that it is just unrealistic to think there are alternative options to EU membership available to us. There aren't. And Liberal Democrat Danny Alexander also weighed in, saying that this compelling CBI report makes a powerful business case for the UK's continued membership of the EU. And finally, Mr Toshiki Shiga, one of the top Nissan executives, lobbed in his two yens worth by stating the UK is part of the European Union, adding with a menacing glance at the Japanese car industry in Britain, that is very important. Not a mention, you would have noticed, about the loss of sovereignty, the destruction of our constitution, or the impending tsunami of immigrants. But this is a business view of the EU, you might argue, presented by those who know about these things and concerned only with turning a profit for the country. The problem with that approach is that it won't wash. We've been here before. Back in July 1999, the CBI released the results of a survey showing CBI businesses and members overwhelmingly in favour of joining the euro. A CBI memo stated, the government should maintain its in-principle commitment to British membership of the euro. Whilst in 1998, the CBI decided to step up pressure on the government to set a firm date for Britain's entry into the single European currency. The EU supporting Guardian recently contained the assertion that the euro proved to be job-destroying, recession-creating, an undemocratic monster. Greece, Portugal, Spain, Ireland and Cyprus, plus a growing number of other eurozone countries, can all vouch for the ruinous nature of the single currency. Yet the very organisation that is now urging us to stay in the EU was fully supportive of Britain joining this botched venture. <laughs> you couldn't make it up. It's FUD at work. Same old, same old. I leave you to decide what trust you can place in any reports or statements from the CBI as you choose what to buy with that extra 3,000 quid a year you are getting from EU membership. Today in our video library, well, keep pushing friends and keep up the pressure. We are almost at 7,000 views of our documentary video Betrayed. Keep posting and sharing and asking your friends to share too. Our goal of 10,000 views before January 1st, 2014 can only be achieved with your help. Now this documentary is a real eye-opener and given that as of Jan 1, 2014, our borders will be open to Bulgaria and Romania, this video is the perfect Christmas gift. Putting people in the know as to why UK Last of the Summer Wine Stooges Cameron and Cleggie are powerless to do a darn thing about it. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. 
I'll see you soon.